Are you ready for the most extreme power you've ever seen in a digital audio player? Can you handle the audio turned up to ultra? Khan is back with more power than ever with the 2023 Khan Ultra. Are you ready? Khan Ultra. Ultra. What's up, everybody? This is Steve from Bloom Audio. Today, we have the Khan Ultra from Astel and Kern. Ultra is the latest in Astel and Kern's powerhouse Khan series, uh, which basically trades a little bit of the brand's trademark refinement for a narrower focus on achieving kind of the ultimate power output in a portable player. This is also the first Khan DAP since Astel and Kern launched a new wave of changes both to the UI and to their system performance starting with the SP3000. Being the most powerful Khan DAP yet, potentially having some of the best performance we've seen from Astel and Kern, and honestly possibly just being a really solid option under $2,000, how does Khan Ultra stack up? Let's take a closer look. At first glance, Con Ultra looks kind of like a Con Max on steroids. It's significantly bigger than the Con Max, which was among the smaller of the Con devices, largely thanks to the new 5.5 inch screen. And the screen is really nice on this. You'll also see the wheel is flipped around onto the backside, so it sort of faces the back. Uh, it looks really cool, but you may run into some issues. At first, it wasn't entirely intuitive for me which way was volume up and which way was volume down because of the orientation. And you can might have some trouble changing the volume with the device laying down on your desk. However you feel about the wheel, the overall build craftsmanship of this device is great. From the materials uh, to those sort of signature lines that Ashtel and Kern has had, while it's not quite as maybe beautiful as the SP3000 or even the SE300. There's a, just a sense of overall quality that very few brands can match. In terms of specs, for headphone outputs, Con Ultra has a 3.5 millimeter single-ended and a 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone out and also a 3.5 millimeter and 4.4 millimeter line output as well. With that 3.5 millimeter being compatible with the mini optical standard for um, SPDIF output. For headphone output, your single-ended 3.5 millimeter output level will range from two volts to three volts, depending on your gain selection. And the balanced, it will be between four and 16 volts. The CPU is octa-core and the display is 5.5 inches. The DAC is an ESS ES9039M Pro, and it has a dual DAC. There's 128 gigabytes of built-in memory that's expandable with micro SD cards up to one terabyte. Con Ultra uses Bluetooth 5.3 with support for AppDex, LDAC, AAC, and other standard codecs. The battery life is estimated for 11.5 hours of playback. I'm playing back on low gain mode. For a recharge, it takes about 4.5 hours on a fast charger or 6.5 hours on a standard charger. One big change on Con Ultra is they dropped the 2.5 millimeter output in favor of splitting the headphone and line out. So now you have completely discrete channels for your preamp or line out from the headphone with the goal of, again, creating as much separation as possible in your circuits to reduce interference as much as possible additional noise, crosstalk, and other issues you run into here. So to get a better idea of what actually using the Con Ultra is, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into Con Ultra's interface. Now we've covered most of the features of Crimson UI in our SP3000, SR35, and SE300 reviews. So we don't wanna to get too into the weeds here, but we did wanna highlight a few of Con Ultra's features. First and foremost is the gain. Con Ultra, has low, medium, high, and super gain levels that can be configured from the menu you swipe down the top. And you can tap on that to cycle through each low, medium, high, super, or you can hold down on that to just select. Digital audio remaster is another really cool feature. Um, this is basically an upsampler for all of your content. You can choose to upsample to PCM or DSD. Again, when you swipe down from the top, this feature is called DAR, and you actually 
do want to hold down on this one to get the full range of options. You can select PCM or DSD here. Typically DSD is going to be upsampling to a higher quality, but that's also going to increase the battery drain because there's a higher level of processing required to do that. Whereas PCM is going to give you some level of upsampling, uh, but with a little bit less drain. Crossfeed is another important feature here. Uh, this is one you can use either to, you know, just general sound if you like kind of blending that, if you feel you can get a more of a better sense of space. But there are also some albums which were recorded in a way that's focused on a two channel system, doesn't work as well in headphones. So again, swipe down from the top. And when you select crossfeed, you can turn it on or off with a tap, but hold down on that and you get a wider range of options. So the difference between the normal, the Chumoy and the Jan Meyer are essentially different algorithms. And this is kind of like a college level advanced mathematics sort of difference in terms of the algorithms for how you blend that. So I'd say make the decision based on your ears rather than trying to thoroughly research exactly what each one of these is doing. Whichever you choose, uh, there's also a shelf option, which again allows you to affect how this impacts specifically the bass because the bass is a really important foundational part of the music. Most modern mixes are gonna put that right down the middle. Some older mixes do not. So you can tweak this a little bit to figure out how that's gonna blend those lower frequency sounds to give you the best listening experience there. We're not gonna do a full rundown here. There are a lot of other features like the EQ, car mode, AK Connect, and AK File Drop. But ultimately, all these things exist in service to the sound. The Con series has traditionally provided a more of a reference tuning without some of that more romantic sound or the liquidy smoothness, some of Astral and Kern's flagship players. And Con Ultra sticks right with that. The tuning to me sounds very similar to Con Max and Con Alpha before it. So compared with the SE300, uh, another recent Astral and Kern release, Con Ultra, again, it just has this fullness through the mid-range and just a sense of linearity throughout the sound where SE300 is a little more spacious and has a little stronger definition, feels a, there's a little emphasis up top there. And to me, Con Ultra ends up feeling just generally more natural in its delivery. In terms of what, what it can and can't handle, we threw a lot of headphones and IEMs at Con Ultra. It really handled 99% of them excellently with the more sensitive IEMs like the Campfire Andromeda. Didn't hear any kind of hiss or background noise. Even turning it up to high gain, I still didn't perceive much. Uh, you know, some of that might be in my head versus actually hearing it in the IEM. And the only place it really came up short at all was with the Hi-Fi Man Susvara, which is, again, has a reputation of being one of the hardest to drive headphones out. There. Where I was really impressed was in that mid-range, those headphones, uh, maybe a Meze 109 Pro or Hi-Fi Man Aria, where you do start to hear some difference between your computer jack output, uh, your average portable player, and a desktop system, where Con Ultra really hit like a desktop system, not like a portable in that middle range of headphones. So when you consider that performance from sensitive IEMs to hard to drive headphones, Con Ultra is really one of the most versatile devices out there. Even compared to the previous generation, the Con Max, there's that you know one extra volt and definitely some changes to the amplification, but Con Ultra does do a little bit better with those harder to drive headphones uh, than Max did and has the improved interface as well. So it, you know, I mentioned before how Con Max has kind of been my go-to at a lot of shows just because you go to Can Jam, you might check out some IMs, you might check out some headphones, you got a player loaded up with music. You want it to be able to handle that full range and Max was always my pick there. Ultra, Again, just some small improvements, but I think big enough to really claim that crown from Max as being this 
easy to use, simple, versatile player that can handle absolutely everything. So you may have gathered Khan Ultras, you know, powerful, versatile, all this stuff, but we wanted to ask, you know, what are some other options that you might be looking for uh, in this same sort of highly versatile, powerful space? When I was trying to find the right match, uh, something with power, versatility, all that other stuff, again, there's not a lot that totally lines up. I didn't want to just do a comparison with a Con Max because there's so much the same with Ultra kind of just being a step better at every intersection. So what we wanted to do is ask, if you want something to listen to headphones, listen to IEMs, what is your best bet there? Does Con Ultra really give you everything a desktop setup would? Or would an even more powerful portable device like Diablo 2 do the job better? On the flip side, uh, maybe we're just getting too caught up in all this power, 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 power stuff. Maybe something with more above average, but more moderate power like the Ibasso DX320 would get the job done just as well without so much focus on the voltage numbers and the other specs. So again, took the same sort of range of headphones and IEMs that we listened to uh, just with Con Ultra. We brought in DX320 and we brought in the iFi Diablo 2. Kind of say, well, how do these all add up and compare here? And the results actually weren't that surprising. So first up, in terms of IEMs and more sensitive headphones, Con Ultra to me was the winner. DX320 was close but I did feel DX320 was more prone to pick up a little bit of interference with IEMs, where Con Ultra pretty much remained silent even as I turned the gain up there. Diablo 2 made some big improvements over the original, specifically for IEMs. Uh, one of the things it did is add an IE match, but it seems like the circuitry in general is just better. I noticed less microphonics and other things from touching the device with sensitive IEMs. So they made some improvements there, but I think needing to turn on IE match for some of the IEMs, you still lose a little something there with the IE match. So I felt Con Ultra and DX320 were better options for IEMs. So with that kind of wider range of less sensitive IEMs and more sensitive headphones, really the bulk of what's out there, you know, whether it's the 99 Classics, or the great OSR80 or who knows, uh, any of this stuff, it was a lot closer. I actually felt like this is the category where I would give Diablo to the edge. I did feel like it had a wider stage. So some of, especially some of these lower end headphones really kind of benefited from adding a little bit of width to the stage. Uh, but other than that in that sound stage from the Diablo 2, uh, again, I think everything performed really well Definitely all three solid options here with that sort of like 80%, 70, 80% of the headphones and IEMs out there. But, you know, as we moved up that headphone range uh, to things more like the Aria Organic or the Odyssey LCD 2, I felt Con Ultra and Diablo 2 separating themselves a little bit from DX320. The dynamics were a little bit stronger. I just felt faster and more resolving where I didn't feel like I was actually getting the best out of the DX320 anymore once you hit a certain mark, particularly with the planar magnetic headphones, um, but even to some degree with harder to drive dynamic headphones like the Sennheiser HD800. But for our final test, the Susvara, having heard Susvara on speaker amps and on higher powered desktop amps that are really capable of bringing out the best in that headphone, didn't really feel like even Diablo 2 was fully up to the task. Uh, Diablo 2 was definitely the winner here. I pulled ahead of Con Ultra. Um, Con Ultra had a bit more clipping and didn't have as much volume. Diablo 2 has more overall power. And again, gave you a little bit more of the Susvara stage and imaging there. Ultimately, none, none of them are giving you full desktop experience. Both be solid secondary options. You know, if you've got a nice setup, uh, desktop setup in your office, and you just wanna be able to listen at a lower level in your bedroom or something like that, both would be great for that. But as your only solution, I wouldn't 
fully recommend either of these for driving the sus far. And it is kind of funny because there are desktop systems with similar voltage numbers or you'll see recommendations for driving the Susfara that have you know, similar wattage and voltage, maybe even less than what Con Ultra and Diablo 2 are coming out. And I think there's an analogy here that might help. It has to do with cars. Uh, so hopefully you get cars a little bit, if not as much as you get headphones. So the two big numbers you see on you know, sports car and truck performance are horsepower and torque. And what you'll find is that a lot of more lightweight roadster type cars will have horsepower that's higher than the torque. Basically, the car has a very high top speed, great acceleration, but don't expect it to tow a lot. On the flip side, a lot of trucks will have a torque number that exceeds their horsepower. And what that tells you is the truck is capable of a much greater towing capacity even if it doesn't have the speed and acceleration of the sports car. So you can kind of think of horsepower as being like the voltage and torque as being like current. So if you have a desktop amp plugged into your wall, uh, your wall outlet, you know, in the United States at least, could be delivering 100 amps of power out of a standard outlet. The battery capacity of the Con Ultra is... 8.4 amps. So that's a full battery discharge can't give you the same level of current as one tenth of what a household outlet can put out at any time. And so essentially, while you can give it a ton of horsepower, you're never going to have that torque, that real raw towing power capacity of a wall outlet in a battery powered device. So what does it all mean? So on the one side, with the technology we have now, portable players can't achieve the same level of performance with the hardest to drive headphones as desktop amplifiers can. But on the other side, they are capable of giving incredible performance and giving desktop level performance with a range of those more moderately hard to drive and even some you know, pretty hard to drive headphones out there uh, with what they've been able to do with players like Con Ultra and portable DACs like Diablo 2. If you are planning on using a lot of headphones, I definitely would recommend looking at higher power device over just a standard digital audio player, especially if you're looking at some of the higher end of planar magnetic headphones. So as you might know, if you've you know, interacted with us at CanJam, sent us an email, or even hit us up on live chat on our website, uh, in addition to doing the reviews, I do a lot of customer interaction as well. And I think it's been a pretty big conversation that a lot of people love the ConMax, but they wanted that upgrade in the performance and in the UI that came with the SP3000 about a year ago. And this is it. Con Ultra does everything that Con Max did, does most of it better. It has the updated UI. Now, the only downside is it does have a bigger screen and is a slightly less pocketable device. But all in all, if you're looking for a powerful, versatile player, you want to keep the price under $2,000, Con Ultra is one of the best out there. Thanks for watching. You can check out Con Ultra. A lot of other great products at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more high-fidelity audio content.